What's up, you shitheads? Welcome to another episode of the number two show live for a good time call holiday edition. Uh, join me in the chat room or call in or send me a message on the point app. We're hanging out today. I've gone live to talk about holidays. The last week of me being in the studio, it's the last week before 2024. So give me a call at 818-532-1420. We'll drop that in the chat. That's 818-532-1420. Operators are standing by for us to have a conversation about the holidays, about New Year's resolutions, uh, about Holiday horror stories, whatever you want to talk about. If you need advice, uh, give me a call. Let's chop it up. Send me a message on the audio or drop me a question in the chat if you're at work and you don't want to get caught fucking off, which I know is what you're doing and I respect you for it. Ah, what a day. There we go. Drop it in the chat. 818-532-1420, baby. We're here. We're having a good time. Uh, just hanging out, man. Riding out the year. It's hard to get motivated this time of year. We're all hanging out. Well, all we're thinking about is Christmas and eating cookies and pies and and all kinds of stuff like that. And you know, 2024 is right around the corner. It's been a weird couple of years. It's going to be an election year. You're going to have to unfriend some people on Facebook. Things are going to get strange in 2024. But cat and pork steaks here. I got you covered. I'm on my throne. I got both hands pushing hard, bearing down, and I'm ready to help you. Um, you know what's crazy about, and I'll start this off. I want to talk about holiday horror stories, all right? Or or things that are maybe funny stories from, and I'll tell you something that happened to me, man, that bummed me out as a dad. I'm a single dad. Uh, you know, I wasn't always the best dad when I was younger. And uh, I always wanted to, you know, when when you're a single dad and like, you know, I there were moments in my life where I was estranged from my son, which I didn't love. Uh, I just didn't get to spend as much time with him as I wanted. Um, and a lot of that was my fault. But there was one specific holiday. We were getting together. He was eight years old. And like, you want to crush it, especially as a single dad, when you don't have him all the time, you just want to crush Christmas, right? And my son wanted, he wanted a, an RC remote control uh dragonfly this thing was dope dude it was uh like a it, it had real dragonfly wings that would flutter and it was on like a styrofoam body it looked like a giant dragonfly it was probably about this big this thing was cool and it was remote control and he wanted it and i was like it's like 300 bucks or whatever which is at that time was a lot of money still a lot of money to this day and i was like i'm, I'm going in i'm getting him this gift i'm gonna be cool dad on christmas it's gonna be awesome and it was he opened it up. He was super excited to get it. We were sitting inside the house, took it out of the box, put it all together, and we tried to fly it in the house. You know, he's eight years old. Got his little RC remote. You got to throw it like a paper airplane to get it going, right? So I'm throwing it. It's crashing into walls. We don't have enough room. He goes, Dad, let's go outside. I said, son, sounds like a great idea. So we go outside. All right. Put on some, he puts on his shoes, he puts on his little overalls, I put on like a coat, we go outside, we're standing out in the yard, I'm like, all right, this is the virgin flight, we're going to throw this thing one time, you're going to fly it, you're going to high five me, you're going to hug me, tell me that, that you love your father, and that you, that you just can't respect, you, 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 you just can't respect me more. I throw the thing one time, it flutters, it falls in a bush. I'm like, that's all right, you're getting the hang of it. Second throw, I take off, I throw this thing as hard as I can, it gets airborne, my little son, he gets it. He starts to go up. It gets about to the pitch of the house. And I'm like, he's doing it. He's flying it. And out of nowhere, a goddamn red tail hawk swoops in out of nowhere and snatches this RC dragonfly out of thin fucking air right in front of me and my kid. He's, I watch a hawk come. This is a 300 and some odd dollar gift. Okay. So that was $150 a flight if you're doing the math on this. It was the second throw on this thing. Hawk grabs it. Starts to, and just flies away with it. I'm just watching $300 fly into the sunset while my son is like mouth agape holding the remote control. And I'm just like, Haha, it's no big deal. But I'm like, what the fuck? That sucks. Uh, he, to his credit, my son had a good sense of humor. He said, dad, if we would have video recorded that, we could have won America's Funniest Home Videos. And it was very sweet. Uh, but I ended up, I had to call the company and I'm like, Hey, I want a replacement. 
on this damn dragonfly. And they're like, well, what happened? And I told them the story. I'm like, sorry, sir, it's, it's not covered. I'm like, well, it says here on the box, high voltage lines, uh, uh, you would give refunds and guarantees for high voltage lines and all that. I'm like, I didn't see anything about birds of prey. Do you need to put that on the goddamn box? Uh, but long story short, they did not give me a refund. And I had to spend another 300 bucks to replace this damn dragonfly. And then I think he played with it like four times like most kids do. And then put it in the closet forever. So that's my holiday uh, horror story. And it looks like I've got an email that came in. Let's see what this email says. Let's open it up. Hey, Rafe, my husband and I need your help to settle an argument. I'll try to keep it brief, but you need the details. Several years ago, we were partying on the river and camping on private property. We have electricity, but no running water or septic. My friend ate weed Cheetos and passed out in our very small camper, 15 to eight feet, 18 feet long. My husband, then boyfriend, I think, said he had to poop. The man shits like a buffalo. Kudos to you. I asked him not to poop in the camper for fear of killing my friend with the fumes. He agreed and went on a walkabout, which I respect. Mick Dundee, go on walkabout. He came back naked, asked, and I asked what he was doing. He said very angrily, I trusted a fart and shit myself. I couldn't stop laughing at the whole thing. Here's the argument. He says it's my fault. He shit his pants because I wouldn't let him poop in his camper, quote unquote. I say it's his fault because I did not crap in his pants he trusted a fart, knowing the Hoover Dam can't stop the sadness about to expel from his body. Disclaimer, all of the arguing is in jest and not a real point of contention in our marriage. We aren't that fucked up unless you side with him. Thanks. All right. Well, that was a very, very thorough email. Um, I got to tell you, it is your fault. Uh, it is 100%. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but... Listen, I don't know how old your boyfriend slash husband was at the time. If your friend is in the camper and that's where the crapper is and he knows he's got to drop a deuce, no, no guy wants to go out in the woods and lean up against a tree and, and try to plop one out. That sucks. You want to sit on your throne. He, it's his camper. You, you denied the king his throne. And as a result, he probably thought, hey, I'm going in the camper. Things start to unlock because in his mind, he's going into the throne. You've now thrown his game off. Now he's waddling his ass through the woods in the dark, probably, trying to figure out a good place to dig a hole and shit while holding on to a tree. And he tried to fart to, like, buy himself some time. He shits up his pants. Now he's Donald Ducking it out of the woods. So I'm sorry to tell you, to, to settle this argument, uh, it is 100% your fault and your husband was right. You, uh, you fucked up. And uh, you have to own that. You, technically, you shed his pants. All right. Well, now that that's settled. Yeah, you can. I see questions in the chat. Can you text a question? 100%. You can uh, text a question or you can call and leave a message in the Point app. Go to the text box. Go to... Um, the number two show, and you can leave me an audio message. I'll play it on the air, and I'll answer your question, or we can talk about your story or whatever you want to do. Uh, cool. Let me go into the chat and see what I got here. Anything good? Hmm. Here we go. Rafe, I can't stop pissing out of my ass. What do I do? Well, I'll tell you what you do, man. Uh, eat more fiber. Uh, eat some drywall. Do something to get your belly back, uh, back 100%. Uh, let's see what else we got. Got a few people on the toilet. That's great. All right. You can text a question. Here we go. Oh, no, wait. That's not a question at all. That was just a comment on my story, which is fine. Uh, do we have any pre-records, guys, or uh, any, any calls coming in at this time? Remember, you can call me at 818-532-1420. That's 818-532-1420. For a good time call. And uh, and I'll get to the bottom of any of your problems here for the holidays. Oh, we got a caller. Great. Patch him through. Put him in the mainframe. I just spit. Did you guys see that on the live? Welcome to the number two show. Today, sir. What's up, brother? Who am I talking hey, to, we, man? Oh, this is Danny. We had a conversation a couple weeks ago about a, uh, like... A three-way where my wife was wearing the Jeff Burton shirt. Yeah, you guys had the ghost three-way. Congratulations. God, ghost three-way. Yeah, yeah, you need to bring that up on the air sometime. We, in the morning, tell 
tell the crew that you had uh, an interesting call. But uh, I don't travel, eat your beaver too hard trying to get on the radio. Argue. What's up? Oh yeah, since we're settling arguments that that couples have today. Okay. Um, and it's kind of following the holiday theme. We were talking about what we were going to have for Christmas for a meal. And I said, I will take it out the day before. I think we're going to have a whole chicken and we're going to do it in the oven because neither one of us really uh, into the ham. And I said, I'll let it thaw, get it thawed. And she calls it unthaw. I said, if you're unthawing something, you're freezing it. So the, you want me to settle the argument of the grammar? Is that what we're getting at here? Well, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it is one of those out. weird words. On it. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those weird words that's not a word. Like, uh, 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 what, are, what are some other examples of that? Where it's like, uh, irregardless. That's not a word. Regardless is a word. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. So unthought, I have to agree with you there, man. Like, you still fucked up because you didn't take the ham out in time, numb nuts, but... I will say this, unthawing is freezing because if you're thawing something out, you are unfreezing it. So if you're unthawing, you're, that's a double negative, which means you would be freezing the ham. So technically, um, you were right, although I'm curious if that winning that argument was worth all of the problems it probably caused you for the weeks following uh, up uh, of correcting her when you yeah. did forget to take the ham out like a dumbass. Well, no, I'm talking about what we're going to do for Christmas. Yeah, so yeah. I still got plenty of time. I still got 11 days. Oh, but, you're good. Oh, that I thought this already that, happened, dude. Honestly, oh, yeah. then you totally win the argument, no. brother. You win. Tell her. No. It's yeah. thawed, lady. And we both work. We we both work night shift, and we get home at six in the morning and tune yeah. y'all in. So we we have a couple cocktails in the morning while we're listening. Nice. I know it's hard to believe, but we were thinking about at uh, six a.m. You guys are drinking, listening the to the show. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> my people, but that's my work, fan base. That you guys you, are my base. All right, brother. Well, Merry Christmas, from, and uh, get the ham out now, so you don't uh, you don't get your ass handed to you by your wife. And I'm congratulations again on having sex with a ghost. That was really cool. All right, next caller. Hey, this is Hank Rafe. Hey, Hank. What's up, buddy? Hey, so I am calling because I got uh, just kind of a question of uh, I'm in a new relationship. Okay. And we've been dating about three months. All right. And I'd say about two months in, I, you know, let her rip. Let her rip. You kind of hold it in. Try to do it privately. Yeah, and yeah. It just happened. Yeah, I think the 90. Now, if there's a she accepted it. She accepted the fart. She accepted it. I, you know, at first, because it, it wasn't a, it wasn't one of those, you know, it was out there. It was long. It was about two, three seconds. So two or three seconds. Was it a dry rip like, or was it a wet one? A little wet. All right. All wet. right. All right. And she and she accepted it. Now, was it a was it a thing yeah, that her, you, did you I, announce beforehand that a fart was coming and try to see how she felt about that, or did you just let it rip and kind of see what her reaction was? I would say, I would say it caught us both by surprise. Okay. So all right, I stood up off the couch. I, I let her rip, and then kind of had a pause, turned and looked at her, and she just laughed. But the thing I'm having issue with is I have yet to hear one from her. Oh. Now, I know the myth where women don't fart, but... Yeah, that is a myth. That is a myth. I'm... <laughs> well, I mean, I is that something you want, her... man? Is that something you're into? Is there, like, a fart kink situation we're talking about? Or is this just, like, you want the the playing field to be even? Like, she's heard you fart, you've heard her fart, now no one's not attracted to the other person based on a fart situation? Uh, it's a little bit of, I wish we could both have fun with it. I'm not saying that yeah. I'm not having fun with her, but the fact that she isn't farting in front of me when I know she's definitely ripping in their Subaru is interesting. <laughs> uh, ripping in the but, Subaru. Uh, you know, maybe, it, <laughs> maybe I want to start an acapella group with her. And well, we never Hank, know here's what I'll tell you, man. Shot. Women, they come along their own timeline. You know, you can't force it. I think you, it, I treat farts like 90 day fiance, right? Like you got 90 days 
to figure out if it's going to happen and then you got to fart in front of them or you can never fart in front of them. You know what I mean? It's like it's almost like that is the right. that is the fart green card, right? Like once you hit 90 days, which you've right. done, I think you waited the right amount of time. You gave her 90 days of gentleman holding it in and then you ripped it and she's still around. So be grateful for that. And in the right amount of time, what'll happen is you're going to catch her. You're, you're going to, you're going to catch her and, uh, it'll happen. And then your reaction has to be cool. And then after that, the floodgates are open, man. So just be patient, buddy. That yeah, fart's maybe. coming. That fart's coming. And, 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 maybe it's my Christmas gift. Maybe dude, maybe Christmas morning. She'll fart in a jar and wrap it up for you. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be a nice Christmas miracle, Hank? All right, Hank, I hope you get a fart for I'll Christmas. Take what I can get. All right, buddy, I'll talk to you later, man. All right. Uh, is this an email? Cool. I got an e chat room. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's read this here. Maybe not the place, but I was really sad to hear about Kenny DeForest this morning. He had me cracking up a couple weeks ago and was one of the most natural and comfortable guests the show has had on. Uh, I would agree. And for those of you watching on YouTube who don't understand that I also do a radio show in the morning, um, uh, I'm on the Riz show during the day for four hours, and a good comedian friend of mine, Kenny DeForest, was on the show about a week or so ago. Uh, he was a very, very close friend of mine, and he unfortunately passed away yesterday. He got hit by a car in Brooklyn, New York. While riding his bicycle, wear your fucking helmets, people. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to process what's going on with Kenny, but I did talk to his family and I talked to some friends in New York. And, uh, you know, they tried everything they could to save him. And uh, it, is a, it is a shame that he passed away because um, he, was a, he was such a good dude in an industry where not everybody is, man. It's easy when you work in an industry where everyone's trying to like do this one in a million dream, right? And the industry kind of pits you against each other where you think you've got this little bitty piece of pie and or little pie and everybody that gets a slice means you're not getting something. And it makes comedians selfish. Uh, and it happens in everything, radio, music, any kind of talent-based industry. Everybody gets pitted against each other. And Kenny would never do that. He was the always there to help you he would vouch for me at clubs that i didn't even know he vouched for me at i'd get phone calls from clubs being like hey kenny DeForest said you're a funny ass dude can you come work this weekend and that that's rare that doesn't happen a lot in our business he was one of the nicest human beings he was a kind and decent soul uh you know and the joke here is there's about 10 comedians i would love to push out in traffic uh, and so it really sucks that Kenny is the one that got hit by a car and passed away. But I love that dude. One of the, our ongoing jokes, I don't know if you guys can see right here. Uh, I have on a turquoise ring. This is the first day I've ever worn this ring. Uh, I don't know if I'm a ring guy or not. I want to be. I do. I kind of want to be that guy. I don't know if I am that guy. But I will tell you that Kenny and I had a running joke. He started losing his hair and had to shave his head. He started looking very white nationalist. Uh, I kind of look like uh, uh, I kind of look like a dude that might have been, you know, that at least took the day off on January 6th to see what was up. And we talked about uh, the only way we could prove that we're one of the good whites uh, that's not uh, a threat to anybody was if we started wearing turquoise jewelry. And it was always a running joke. We would text each other pictures of rings and bracelets and giant necklaces and say, is today the day? Is this the day we wear turquoise jewelry? There's my boy Kenny on the screen. Love that dude. Um so I'm wearing this ring today in honor of Kenny. Uh, I feel for his family. I love that man. He was doing so good. He had turned a corner. He just moved back to New York. He was six months sober. He was kicking ass, taking names. He just had a special. And if, if you guys don't do anything else this holiday season, go check out Kenny DeForest's special on YouTube. And I'll put that in on my socials later today. And he was a funny talented guy and he is all the proof i need that the industry uh industry doesn't know what the fuck they're doing half the time or if kenny would have been famous a long time ago um but here's to kenny i love him and i feel for his family and uh keep go donate to the uh there's the you can go to the riz show twitter and see a fundraiser for kenny for because it's, it's, they still got to pay all these medical bills and they've exceeded what they asked for but if you got a couple extra bucks to give, it'll help his family kind of get square on the debt of all the uh, 
doctors and nurses and hospitals that tried to save Kenny's life. And uh, he's living on out there in organs because his organs were all donated, which is super dope. If you're not an organ donor, you should be. And, uh, yeah, I love Kenny a lot, man. And it's a real, real sad thing. And I appreciate a lot of people reached out to me about it today privately and in messages. And I miss him. I love him. I'm sad that I didn't get to spend more time with him when he was here last weekend. So spend time with the people you love because you never know how much longer they have or you have on this earth. I know that sounds cliche, but it's true. So here's to Kenny. I love you, bud. Turquoise jewelry fist coming at you. Boom in heaven or whatever the hell you believe in. And, and I'll see you on the other side, brother. All right. Moving on. Oh, here we got another one. Is this from the chat or do we have a caller? All right, I got another one from the chat. Here we go. 31 years with my husband, and we still don't intentionally fart in front of each other. This is a running theme. However, the moment I fall asleep, he gets the pleasure of hearing everything I held in all day. Yeah. I live with a sleep farter myself, and uh, she's blowing ass on me all night long. So I completely understand. That's what makes me laugh so hard when I hear people say, like, I don't fart in front of my significant other. I'm like, then you don't sleep in the same bed because I promise you, at some point you have farted in front of them and you just don't know it. And I don't think it's anything you should feel bad about. I don't think you should be holding it in until bedtime. I don't get it. Like, here's the thing. I saw something the other day. It was probably an internet meme. This isn't an original thought. But it was like, hey, if you, don't, if you can't find fun and humor and farts, okay, uh, you're robbing yourself of joy because you're going to have the exact same amount of farts in your life, whether you enjoy them or not. So you're just keeping the farts and you're robbing yourself of the joy. Why would you do that to yourself? And I can tell you this, as a dude, I, we got an open fart household, you know. Like I don't celebrate it. I don't hold her down and Dutch oven her face or anything crazy like that. We got an open fart household, and I got to tell you, never once have I looked at my significant other post-fart and been like, ugh. I never want to have sex with her again. Don't think it doesn't even affect me. So, so if that's what you're worried about, don't worry about it. Let it rip. All right, cool. Uh, I think I got a caller. Let's switch it up. Get somebody on the horn here. Let me know when they're in. Hello. Hello. You're on the number two show with Rafe Williams. How can I help you? I'm first of all, love your show. Listen to you every morning too. You guys are doing fantastic. Thank you. Um, about the fart thing. <laughs> this is a real the fart themed show. I love it. <laughs> My husband is a, the master of no expression on his face, watching something headphones on and sneaking one out that could kill a population. Yeah. And after a few times into our first year of marriage, Mm -hmm. I decided to do the same to him one night. So I did my best saving up as much gas as I could for a couple of days, let one slip. And he jumped out of bed and did this whole golf, coughing, gasping thing, walking around. He went into his office. He's sputtering and coughing, came back into the bedroom and sat down. And then he made this big production of, oh, my gosh, what is this? And he goes, I knew it was bad. Look at this. You, you actually pooped in the bed. And I said, I did not. And he goes, yeah, you actually pooped in the bed. Look. And he pulls back the covers, and there was the most amazing piece of poop sitting there. <laughs> so realistic that I actually, I actually went into the bathroom and took some toilet paper and wiped myself to prove to him that I did not leave that poop in the bed. That's how realistic it was. And meanwhile, the little jerk had gone into his office, and he's a veterinarian, and oh. he has all this collection of fake rubber poop. Oh, um, I thought you shit the bed. I'm going to be honest. Uh, you buried no, the lead a little. No, but I thought I did, too. I uh, thought I did, too. He totally got me. Well, you know what? <laughs> that sounds like a fun situation all around. And also, like, I would like to say it one is. thing about your story. You said, I saved up all my gas for two days and let one slip. Those... That does not sound true. That sounds like it didn't slip at all. I know. I, that sounds yeah. like you saved up gas it's, it's and you so blew good. ass all over him, which is totally fine. Uh, <laughs> and also pretty good bit, then. honestly. And you know what? Like I, sh yeah. And if you did shit the bed and you've changed the story a little bit because you feel embarrassed, don't. Because we've all. No, I didn't. 
I have I've almost shit the bed a couple times in my life. It's 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 part of growing older and it's a natural thing. But I appreciate you being honest and vulnerable and sharing that story. And Merry Christmas and happy holidays. You too. Have a good one. All right, bye bye. This <laughs> turned into a fart cast today, and I like it. All right, I got something from the chat or email. It says, is there anything wrong with agreeing with your adult children to not buy for each other? We actually agreed to do nothing but drink, smoke, and eat. Is that horrible? Uh, no, it isn't. I actually think that's a really cool thing. I've been trying to get this through my mom's head. Um, love my mom. Every year at Christmas, I feel like right before Christmas, I'm trying to declutter my house and get rid of a whole bunch of shit I don't want. And I'm like, Mom, I'm... I have everything I need. We're adults. Uh, if there's something that you need, ask your parents for it. If there's something that you want, ask for it. But as far as just buying each other gifts to to, to have a bunch of knickknacks and, and, and tchotchkes to open, like, man, let's just have a nice meal. Let's all maybe go to the casino together, go do something cool, spend that money that way. Uh, but by all means, do not... Uh, do not feel like you have to, that you're a bad person if you guys don't want to exchange gifts. I think that's totally fine, especially in adulthood. I mean, if you have kids, you don't get them anything. You're a total piece of shit. But otherwise, you're cool. Okay, moving on. Got anything good from the uh, chat? Got any callers? What do we got going on, boys? I can't hear you in my headphones very well. Crickets, that's what we got. All right, well, this show's really taken off. Uh, I see one that's a non, I'll, I'll end on this one from Jessica. Non-shit related question. Is it weird that I find it weird that they say a blessing at work holiday parties? Not a religious based company. Uh, you know, yes, it is a little weird to me because we live in such a, uh, we live in such a sensitive world to everyone else's viewpoints and especially in a workplace environment. So it is a little weird if somebody wants to say the blessing. I personally wouldn't care. I'm a to each their own. If it makes them feel better, it makes them, as long as they're not, you know, they're not handing out uh, King James Bibles to everybody after the, after the uh, meal, I think you can look the other way, but it is a little bit weird. And I don't think that you're wrong for feeling weird about it. It's just not a hill I would personally die on. But, hey, if it means a lot to you, you know, kill him. That's what you got to do. Just kill him. Please don't kill anyone. Uh, for the record, on the Internet, I am not actually advocating the killing of another human being. This is all being said tongue-in-cheek. Trademark, Rafe Corp. Um, let's see, I've got another good one here. Let's talk in-laws. My in-laws live a couple hours away from me and my wife. They want us to come down the 24th and spend the night for Christmas I said we are in our 30s and we're too old for sleepovers. Hmm. I would like to point out that your screen name is Dumpster Baby 94. Uh, before uh, before you get a little too much up on your high horse about what an adult you are, uh, no offense, but let's just let's suss this out in an honest way. Uh, so Dumpster Baby 94, I think. Uh, Depending on how big your parents' house is, I mean, like, what's? It's not a sleepover. You guys aren't banging your parents. You guys aren't. You guys aren't sleep. You're not sleeping head to toe like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, are you? It's not like four grandparents, two parents, and three kids in the bed all sharing one chocolate bar and a fire. Now, if they got a small place, get yourself a hotel. I get that. They live like two hours away. Uh, now, I don't know if maybe that's like a hey, it's Christmas Eve. We like to wake up and open presents and all be in the same house. And if that's the case, I. I don't think it's a, a thing you should be pissed off about or upset about. I think you just uh, you got to roll with the punches a little bit sometimes. Now, if it's a weird thing where, you know, they make you put your keys in a bowl and, uh, you know, maybe your spouse is from Arkansas or Alabama or something like that, then, yeah, I would be worried. I would I think that's something you should be worried about. But otherwise, I think I don't think it's a big deal. Just uh, go down there and. And don't get too up on your high horse about what you're too old for if you're still rocking uh, Dumpster Baby 94 as your screen name. That would be my first advice. All right. Oh, that Christmas music means it's time for the wrap-up. I've had a fun time talking with you guys today, and I certainly hope 
that you've had a fun time. I know the holidays are a stressful time and hanging out with family can really piss you off in all the right ways. So whatever you're doing, try not to stress out this holiday season. Uh, make sure that you're if you dump a growler at the in-laws house try to use the upstairs bathroom so you don't get blamed for it and always check and make sure the toilet flushes first because i've been caught there before i'll see you next year <coughs> on the number two show i've had a fun time doing it with you this year and i look forward to all the episodes we're going to make next year i got a lot of big plans for this show and i appreciate you guys being part of the ground floor and i'll see you next year and don't forget to wipe i'm rafe williams thanks for watching Number two show. Ho, ho, uh, 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 oh.